back to the series. This is part four, and today I'll be repairing my old garage floor. So to get started, if you haven't already seen the previous videos of the series, I urge you to do so. These steps can be neglected if you want your epoxy not to lift and last for a long time. The materials and tools you'll be needing will depend on your type of repair. I'll need to cut the perimeter of my repair area about a quarter inch deep, so I'll need a grinder and a dry cut diamond blade like this one. Whenever cutting into concrete, you'll want to have some sort of dust extraction like a shop vac. Another tool you'll be needing is a drill with a mixing paddle. If you don't have these tools, you could very well use a recipient and mix everything by hand. An electric breaker or pneumatic hammer and other miscellaneous tools I'll be showing during the video. So the first thing I did was to outline the areas I'd need to cut a quarter inch deep around the perimeter. I then went ahead and made the cuts and chipped away using my electric chipper all the bad pitted concrete. You'll notice after a while that your chipping bit might become dull and not work as well. So what I did is took a grinder with a grinding disc and lightly gave it back its convex edge. Don't overheat the steel as to not temper it. You should be left with a nice sharp edge like this afterwards. With all the bad concrete removed, use a shop vac or blower to get all the dust and debris out and away from the repair area. The cement mix I'll be using is called Sika Top 122 Plus. Sika is known for making excellent quality products, so I chose to go with them for this project. The 122 comes with a corrosion inhibitor, which helps prevent corrosion if using rebar in your fix. I don't really need it since I'm not installing any rebar, but I'll use it anyways just to be safe. When you're ready to pour your mix, you'll need to wet your repair area. The reason for this is that concrete is like a sponge. If you leave your area to be repaired dry when pouring, it'll want to draw in the water from your mix, consequently changing its content ratio. Once dampened, you're ready to pour your mix. I used a 10 inch trowel to disperse the mix equally throughout the area and finished it off with a straight edge. I used a scrap piece of Russian plywood I had laying around. This gave me a nice uniform finish. You could remove all the excess cement before it hardens to have less grinding to do later on down the road. Or you could just skip the step if you prefer. I then waited for the mix to harden just enough so it's still malleable and used a damp sponge to smooth out any imperfections. During the curing process, putting some plastic wrap or vapor barrier over the repair will help keep the moisture content from escaping too quickly. If you skip this step, your newly poured concrete will dry too fast and you'll end up with a cracked floor. With that aside, we can move on to fixing the cracks. The idea behind fixing these is to remove any loose or fragile concrete that can compromise the repair. The general rule of thumb that I go by is if you strike it with a hammer and it breaks, it's because it wasn't meant to stay there in the first place you'll end up with a crack that's bigger than when you started and that's exactly what you want. What you'll need to fill these gaps with is a caulking gun, some kiln dried silica sand, a spatula and some two-part epoxy. As hard as epoxy is when cured, it's also flexible which is perfect for this kind of fix. So the first thing to getting this done is to put some sand at the bottom of the crack as to not waste any epoxy. Without any sand, the epoxy will just flow down into the ground. The goal here is to create a paste. I used an approximate 50 to 50 ratio to achieve this and got some great results. When all your repairs are done, I suggest waiting at least 24 hours for them to cure before sanding them down. You'll be left with a smooth, strong finish ready to get painted. The last thing I did was to install some foam insulation on each side of my slab to prevent bugs from getting in in summer and cold air from getting in in winter. That completes part 4 of the series. All that's left to do is to paint your slab with your favorite color epoxy paint. I'll cover this in part 5. Until the next video, keep building!